The strangest stranger sensation. sensation. I am on the I'm floor. On the floor. Face down, stretched out, ungainly, uncomfortable. I reach out my hand to Alice. She is also lying on the floor. A pool of liquid is forming between us, and my hand becomes slick with it. Fingers slide across each other as our hands meet and grasp. We gaze, mute with shock and pain at each other, and know we are dying. Alice moans, pulls her hand away. Her face twists. She tried to escape, ran distracted round and round the kitchen, and they, the three of them, pursued her as if she were a deer, and she was stabbed again and again, glancing blows. She must be in great pain. Her eyes begin to cloud. No, Alice, please, stay. But my words get stuck in my mouth as my breathing becomes more laboured. I am just thankful they did not violate her before she was murdered. She was not dishonoured. Ha, listen to me. I am grateful to those animals. They broke into my house in daylight. Alice was putting away the breakfast things and I was tying on my cloak. They crept in, through the door from Jewelry Street that leads into the courtyard. They were silent their faces hidden. They did not answer my challenge. Was it shame at what they're about to do? Or because I would recognise their voices? Alice drops a plate. She screams and screams. I do not give them the satisfaction. I stand taller, know exactly what they're about to do. Our neighbours must have heard the disturbance and they, good Christian souls that they are, did nothing. Nothing. What did I expect? I have managed to live some 70 years in a country where Jews are barely tolerated. Not worthy of respect or safety, spat on in the street and from time to time worse, houses set on fire or run out of town or hanged for the crime of money clipping. We are necessary, needed to help them run their businesses, to borrow money from. And what do we get? Two or three percent. Those Lombardy robbers charge upwards of 50%, and yet we are the ones who are vilified, accused of the most heinous crimes, obscene crimes, stealing babies to sacrifice them. Who would do such a thing? And why? I see from my vantage point on the flagstone some dried peas hiding under the table. I must tell Alice to be more thorough when she sweeps. I turn my head carefully each movement making waves of pain. Alice? Alice? I am alone, and my own eyes start to blur. The terror of dying is scattering my thought. I try to stay calm. I have no future, just these last, last moments. Maybe in a hundred, a thousand years, these vicious slanders and physical attacks will become a thing of the past. I have to believe... We will all, eventually, whatever our beliefs, choose tolerance over fear, love over hate. But for now, we have a Jew's Tower. Yes, here in Winchester, in King Henry's Castle. Built because Jews belong to the crown and assets need to be defended to protect us when the mob rises, as it does, as regularly as the sun in the east. Usually when taxes are raised or there are food shortages. And yet again... We are blamed. We must wear yellow cloth badges on our clothing to announce our religion to the world. In Oxford there is a new law that says these cloths must be shaped like the Star of David. These signifiers make it wonderfully easy to identify us and so attract the shouts and the stones. No, no. I must not leave the world bitter and resentful. I must forgive all, even my killers. I must remember happier times. Distract from the agony of my wounds. Fortify myself for whatever lies beyond life. I hope there is love there. When I first met David of Oxford, he said to me, I have heard of you, Licorice of Winchester. I hear you are clever and ambitious. I wanted to impress him. 
I did inherit my husband's business, but I have grown it, and now number landowners, and the monks of St. Swithin's amongst my clients. So my ambition has fed and clothed my family. And clever. How shall I answer that without appearing immodest? He laughed and said, I won't think that. I promise. Well then, I answered, well, I still don't know how to answer. Or in what language? In French or Latin? Or our own language, Ladino? He smiled and made a silly joke about the taste of my name in his mouth, because in English it means sweet. And we were married the following month. But I was widowed again too soon, too soon. I have my dear son Asa to hold his memory. <laughs> oh, the pain racking my body competes with the pain in my heart at the thought of my children. Five beautiful children. I was so happy, I was so very fortunate to survive, bring them into the world, to see them grow and prosper. They will have my coffin made. I won't be buried in a coarse cloth like the Christians and oversee my burial in the land set aside for us, outside the city walls. And there will sit shiver for my soul. That is some comfort. Not long now. So cold, I would shiver if I had any strength left. I feel myself dissolve. I raise my eyes to look at Alison. She is a husk without the animation of life. Will that happen to me? Ugh, I'm all old. Already half a husk in most eyes, and why? Why did this happen? Envy at my wealth, my success? Because I'm a woman who has dared to walk as an equal with men? Or was it and an ancient anger stirs in my heart? Because I am a Jewess. Because I am proud of my faith, and you, you English Christians, scorn and revile me. I defy you. The more you abuse us, threaten or attack us, in the courts, in the streets, or now, in our very own homes, that faith cannot, will not be broken. I felt to feel death creeping closer. Soon, very soon, when the panic rises again, grasps my throat. Oh, I don't want to go. But I can't have my death. And what now? Our ancient belief is that demons and angels struggle for the soul of the dying person. Can that be true? Where will my soul go? Where will it wander? What will I find at my journey's end? Maybe David will be waiting for me. Or our Holy Father Abraham. Please God, let the angels win. <laughs>